this is where I think President Obama um, writing about and talking about the truth decay is, is spot on. How does anyone, a, a, a Democratic president or a Republican president, lead a country when half of it doesn't agree on a, a set of facts? And it's, it's rearing its ugly head. It is not going to go away if we stop covering Trump's stupid human tricks. You've got an anti-vaxxer invited to testify in the Senate. You've got people fighting about whether or not masks are necessary. You've got um, this Staten Island bar owner who's become a hero on the right, um, defying uh, law enforcement officials in New York State. This is happening all over this country, this defiance of the truth which in their minds maybe is the defiance of the left or the defiance of the elite, I think makes the country ungovernable. Yeah, and, and by the way, um, the right making a hero of a guy who literally tried to run down a member of law enforcement. I mean, the man went up over his hood um, as he hit him and struck him with his car. Um, this is the same group of people that supposedly is all about supporting law enforcement. Um, and it, it is so nonsensical. And this this area, this fact you're talking about, and it is a fact that we have lost a firm grip on what the facts are and what truth is. That is where I place the most blame on my former Republican colleagues. And then for this simple right. reason, the way you fix this is by people of both parties saying enough, enough. You could isolate Donald Trump, make him less relevant in terms of him destroying the norm of a free and fair election if people of both parties of goodwill had the courage to say, you know, that's just not what the facts are. Uh, those aren't those aren't secret suitcases of ballots. They were opened in front of everyone, including the news media. What are you doing? The fact they are so afraid of his base on a political basis is more damaging to the future of this country than, frankly, the antics yeah. of Donald Trump. Sam Stein, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you to end with, you know, what do we do? But, but I guess the, the first thing I want you to speak to is how at this moment, when, when Rudy, the depiction of Rudy on SNL with flatulence is indiscernible from the reality of Rudy in an American courtroom, how does that take down a, a once, if not noble, legitimate political party. I mean, this is not Trump at his best. This is Trump at his most absurd, at his most debased. And Mitch McConnell, Rob Portman, Richard Burr, these people who, when I worked in Republican politics, you may disagree with every single thing they believed in, but, but they were adults and, you, you know, they, 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 they saw the sun come up in the morning. They saw the sun go down at night. They are now living in fact-free Trumplandia. So one, what do we do about them? And then two, wh what is sort of, what does the solution look like? Where does it start? I'm glad you saved the uh, Rudy flatulence question for me, as opposed to the senator. Uh, <laughs> it's, I'm me a little too. bit more dignified. <laughs> I'm a little bit more dignified for that question, I think, than a former elected official. Um, <laughs> I think there's a, the problem here is, uh, I think, to simplify probably a little too much, is uh, incentive structures, right? A sitting Republican lawmaker to, in essence, tell the truth or do the right thing, protect democracy. Usually we wouldn't have these questions because the incentive structures were so obvious. But in a day where you have uh, a huge amount of disinformation and misinformation flying about, where you have someone who, as demagogic as he is, he's quite talented at whipping up. Uh, uh, a fervent base, Donald Trump, um, you've created sort of perverse incentive structures in which normally sane, rational uh, law and democracy and norms don't feel like it's in their self-interest to do that. Uh, and honestly, if I had the answer for how you could convince them that it was in their self-interest, <laughs> I probably wouldn't be on the show. I would be doing something if they're complicated. Situation. I will just say one would have happened if a few elected Republican officials didn't have the integrity that they did. So if you had a uh, state right. uh, um, secretary of state in Georgia who bent to the pressure and didn't feel like there was an incentive structure for him to stand up to the misinformation, what would our situation be like now? It would be a lot more tense, I think. And so, you know, yes, our system has been stress test and it may have passed, but I don't think we should take any solace in this. Because it became, it's awfully close from being in a much worse place than it is right now. 
Let me follow up with you because I thought that I, I you know, in, in the spirit of still covering this president, because I think he is the most dangerous to us literally right now. I watched um, his rally Saturday night and we watched it. And, and I thought if he could have stolen this, he would have. He didn't have any yeah. intention of winning fair and square. I'm not even sure he had any intention of winning at the ballot box. His intention was to muscle and strong arm state election officials to try to eke out some cheating in recounts and then to pressure electors not to, you know, to appoint different electors when the date came to certify the vote. And, and, and I guess, Sam, with that so clear, that, that just adds to my rage and bewilderment that Republicans won't stand up and say, this got right. way too close for comfort. This is our system. We all have to protect it. And I swear, if, if Republicans rebuked him as forcefully as Claire and, and her Democratic, former Democratic colleagues in the Senate, he would, he would go away a lot more quickly than he's going to. They are changing the arc of this presidency, of the Biden presidency. They're changing the arc of the United States Senate. I don't know how any of them stand up and object to anything Biden does if only 27 people between the House and Senate have acknowledged his victory. Do you? No, I, but I, I fully expect that they're going to oppose Biden in ways that they never would have opposed Trump, right? I mean, there's already talk, for instance, and this is just one example, of Neera Tandon uh, being um ill fit right. for OMB because she sent mean tweets. Well, I mean, like, right. where, where have we been living in the past four years has been just a, you know, never ending stream of mean tweets, but you know, these you cyber know, bully in chief, when, right? Yeah. With si standards change when uh, power changes, I guess the only thing that, you know, possibly could come of this that would be constructive would be if uh, a host of people across the political aisles were committed to the idea of sort of rebuffing our democratic institutions and systems, making yeah. it so that voting wasn't just restricted, but transparent and, you know, doing all the type of lower D democratic reforms that obviously are still needed. But I don't see that happening anytime soon. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.